Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you by Maui Jim Sunglasses. First Tellurium Corp, the future of mining. And Hardy, rods and reels. Good day folks, welcome back to On the Bench. Today I'm going to tie for you my Helter Smelter Coronamid. I have been using this fly for about a year, uh, paying a little homage to my new hometown of Trail. It's been working really well in every lake I've fished it in. Make sure you have these materials handy before you tie the fly. For a hook I'll be using a Togans uh, curved nib hook, two times long, size 16. The bead I'm using is a brass cool bead, the color's matte black, size 5 64th, 2 millimeter. If you don't have matte black, you could use gunmetal. I've used both on this fly and done well. For the thread body, I'll be using classic wax thread in the color Steel by Semperfly. For the gill, I'm using microglint, tinsel, and pearl by Semperfly. And for the rib, I'll be using uh, fine wire, black wire. And I'm also going to be using a marker for the thorax, or you could use black thread. I'm just using a black marker by Artist Loft. So I've gone ahead and I've slid my bead onto the hook with the wide end of the bead facing forward so I can slip it over my gill. I'm just going to push the bead back. Just, just start your thread on the hook right at the front. Five wraps or so. And then next I've taken the Semperfly Micro Glint See how it sparkles. But the reason I really like this stuff is because unlike uni, if you're fishing a lake in the summer that's full of algae, this stuff does not take on the green color. It doesn't turn green. So I fished uh, uh, quite a few lakes with this fly last year. I did well everywhere with it. So I've just taken about eight strands of the micro glint. I sort of wrapped it around my fingers four times and cut it in half. I find eight strands to be about right for this size hook anyway. I'm just going to attach. And now I'm going to trim this at an angle very close. And just take my uh, whip finisher. And I'm going to whip finish over top of that little bump. snip away your thread and then just slide your bead right over that gill right to the front and then I like to trim my gills right away so I just trim them sort of uh, even with the front of the um, hook <laughs> great like that next just um, reattach your thread behind the bead Snip that. Now you can take your ribbing material. I'm using the black wire. I'm going to find black wire. Uh, this slice good with red wire, black and red, silver. Um, so if you don't have black rib, uh, you could use another color. <laughs> I'm just going to tie that right on and just pull it back. Just going right down the side of the fly with my wire. Trying not to miss too many spots. As I get down here, I'm just going to give my thread a little spin to flatten it out. And I'm going to take it right down. I like to take mine right down to the curve. I'm going to put one turn of thread in behind the wire. And then just try and cover this body up as best I can. Spin my thread again. Uh, Classic Wax does uh, flatten out. Some of you who are used to working with 8O might want to use 8O for this. I uh, have it on order. <laughs> All I have is 12 and 18-0. Um, 
Yeah, it flattens out nicely if you give it a spin. And I'm just going to build my taper. I'm going to go back about halfway down the fly or so. Bring it back up. To the front, throw a few extra wraps in there. And then I'm just going to bring it down about half that distance. That should be good. Next, I'm just going to throw a, a whip finish in to hold my thread in place. And I'm going to bring my bobbin cradle over, tuck it out of the way. And now you can take your rotary vise. You can do this by hand if you don't have a rotary. And I'm just going to try and get about seven or so uh, even ribs. Vice moved on me there. Now you can just tie that wire off. Oh, a few. Hang on a second. <laughs> a little disaster there. Just tie that off carefully. I'm trying to keep my thread right at the front behind the bead. Sorry, this is kind of difficult to do with the camera in front of me. I like to just give it a, a, a couple wraps in front before I break my wire off. Next, you can take a marker, um, or you could change thread, thread colors if you don't have a marker to black. I do prefer a black thorax on this fly. So I'm just going to color my thread black. I'm using a, a Artist Loft marker. I get these at uh, Michael's. And I'm just going to whip finish. I like to get it to like so. Pull your thread nice and tight before snipping it off. And now to coat the fly, once it's finished being tied, um, I've been using kind of a combo of, I'm waiting for some uh, UV resin to come in. I'm using a combo of the brushable crazy glue. Uh, I also got this at Michael's and I've got hard as hull uh, head cement that I use. Uh, I got this at Sea Run Fly and Tackle. So I'm just gonna give it a little coat. The crazy glue is great because it doesn't uh, discolor the thread at all. So I like to put it on first to maintain that nice uh, steel color. Just make sure I'm not too much on there. If you think you have too much coming down, you can just take your tool and wipe a little bit off. And once that dries, um, you can just take a second coat or of crazy glue, or if you have Sally Hansen's or UV resin, whatever you prefer. And I'm just going to put a drop right on top here. Mine's getting a little bit dry. I think I'm going to have to fix that with my tool again. A little bit too much on there. It will, if you put it right on top there, it will soak down into the fly as it's drying. Um, I usually just tuck it into a little uh, cork and then let it dry there. So that's it, my Helter Smelter Coronamid. Thanks for joining me on this edition of On the Bench. Take care, everyone. Conserve the waters and tight lines.